Hello students, so uh, in the last class we looked into the definition of uh, beta and gamma functions and uh, we also uh, tried to derive some properties uh, related to um, these two uh, special type of uh, integrals. Um, and uh, in, the in, the, in this uh, lecture, we will actually work out few examples and we will also derive some properties of these two integrals um, and uh, uh, we will see uh, how we can apply those, in, uh, those uh, uh, properties to solve some uh, problems. So, in order to start with, uh, let's uh, so this is uh, so this is the first uh, this is the topic which we are going to cover today uh, beta and gamma function and their properties and if time permits um, then we will start with differentiation under the integral sign so let's begin so in the last class we saw that uh, uh, the gamma function is defined as gamma n equals to integral from 0 to infinity x to the power n minus 1 e to the power minus x dx where n is a positive number and uh, beta function is defined as beta mn equals to or you can also write beta mn it is up to you whatever notation you prefer uh, integral from Z 0 to 1 x to the power m minus 1 times 1 minus x to the power n minus 1 dx where m and n are both positive numbers. So, both of these two integrals are of course improper integral for certain values of m and n and uh, we have shown that uh, these two um, improper integrals are also convergent for these uh, m and n um, considered to be positive. Now, uh, there is a very nice relation between beta and gamma function although it does not seem uh, like uh, just uh, looking at these two integrals because one of them involves uh, uh, e to the power minus x uh, whereas the other one does not involve any kind of exponential function um, although um, we will see that uh, these two uh, integrals are actually related. However, the proof is not that simple and uh, if we get into the proof then it will be slightly complicated. So, I will um, skip the proof but I am going to write the relation because it will help us solve several problems. For, uh, for those of the students who are interested in the proof, uh, you can look into the books which I have recommended. Um, it is not that difficult, it is just that it is too lengthy and uh, keeping the time constraint in mind, um, it is um, it's really not uh, um, worth doing in the class. Um, however, the proof uh, is interesting and uh, I would suggest to look into, the, uh, look into those books. So, the relation between uh, the relation between beta and gamma function is the relation between beta and gamma function is given by beta m n equals to gamma m times gamma n divided by gamma m plus n where m and n are both positive numbers. So, this is the first relation between uh, beta and gamma function and uh, just uh, if uh, let us say uh, if we if we are asked to calculate the value of let us say uh, beta half and beta half then in that case we can write it as gamma half and gamma half divided by gamma 1 and uh, if we know the value of gamma half then we can be able to calculate the value of beta half and half. So, let us um, let us see how we can um, uh, calculate the value of um, uh, gamma half. So, this is our first relation. Now, the second relation is between the uh, between the uh, trigonometrical function and gamma function. So, this says that uh, integral from 0 to pi by 2 sin p to the power x times cos q to the power x dx equals to gamma p plus 1 by 2 times gamma q plus 1 by 2 divided by 2 times gamma p plus 1 by 2 comma q plus 1 by 2 uh, sorry plus. So, p plus 1 by 2 plus q plus 1 by 2. So, this is another relation between beta uh, between uh, uh, gamma function and the trigonometrical function. So, how do we 
prove this relation. So, the proof of this relation is fairly simple. So, the solution or the proof of that relation uh, goes like this. If you remember, we have shown that beta p q equals to integral from. So, we had this relation uh, integral from uh, 0 to pi by 2 to uh, cos 2 p minus 1 times uh, x and uh, sin 2 q minus 1 x dx. So, we had proved this relation. Now, uh, if I substitute in place of p, p plus 1 and in place of q, q plus 1, then this will reduce to, so this will reduce to um, 2 times integral from 0 to pi by 2 cos p to the power x um, and uh, sin q to the power x. and uh, or we can we can take the other relation we don't we don't need to take this relation we have we can take the other relation between beta and gamma function the other relation is we have derived this one so the other relation is uh, beta p plus 1 beta p plus 1 we have this relation which we have derived in the previous class beta p plus 1 by 2 Time, uh, comma q plus 1 by 2 is actually sin p to the power um, x times cos q to the power x. So, this, this relation we have already derived um, in the previous class and uh, this can be written as 2 times sin p to the power x um, times cos q to the power x is equals to uh, beta p plus 1 by 2 comma q plus 1 by 2 and now here I will use the relation 1 and based on relation 1 I can write gamma uh, p plus 1 by 2 times gamma q plus 1 by 2 divided by beta m plus n. So, beta uh, gamma m plus n. So, this can be written as uh, gamma of p plus 1 by 2 plus q plus 1 by 2. So, here we have used via relation 1. Let us see what is relation 1. So, in relation 1, uh, beta m n can be written as if I replace m by p plus 1 by 2 and n by q plus 1 by 2, then I can write gamma p plus 1 by 2, gamma q plus 1 by 2 divided by gamma p plus 1 by 2 plus q plus 1 by 2. So, this is the relation which we have used here and uh, this can be written as. Uh, so, this can be written as integral from 0 to pi by 2 sin p to the power x times cos q to the power x dx equals to half times gamma p plus 1 by 2 times gamma q plus 1 by 2 divided by gamma p plus 1 by 2 plus q plus 1 by 2. So, this is the required relation and uh, here uh, we know that gamma is defined for, uh, um, uh, for, for all the positive numbers. So, in order to have this one as positive, so gamma is defined for all n greater than 0. So, in order to have this one positive, I can write p plus 1 by 2 greater than 0 and uh, q plus 1 by 2 greater than 0. That is our p must be greater than minus 1 and q must be greater than minus 1. So, this relation is true. So, here I can write the condition that uh, p is greater than minus 1 and q is greater than minus 1. So, for p and q both greater than minus 1 this relation holds. Now, let us see how we can obtain the value of gamma half. So, to obtain the value of gamma half that will be our relation 3. So, gamma half is square root of pi by 2 or square root pi sorry not by 2 is simply square root of pi all right. So, from previous relation, so from previous relation we have uh, um, gamma so beta p plus uh, 1 by 2. Uh, q 
plus 1 by 2 or we can take uh, beta m n relation. So, from the previous relation we know that uh, beta m n is basically gamma m times gamma n divided by gamma m plus n. So, here if I take if I take m and n equals to uh, half then this will become beta half half and uh, this will be gamma half times gamma half divided by gamma half plus half. So, the denominator will become gamma half and we know that the value of gamma half is 1. So, I can write this one as gamma half whole square divided by 1. So, I am not writing that one and beta half a half can be written as integral from 0 to 1 x to the power half minus 1 times 1 minus x to the power uh, 1 minus x to the power half minus 1 dx. So, this will be basically uh, integral from 0 to 1 root x by root x times root x minus uh, 1 minus root x uh, 1 minus x sorry. So, this will be root of 1 minus x dx. Now, this is a classical example of a method of substitution. So, I substitute x equals to sin square theta and uh, then you do some trigonometrical simplification which I am pretty sure you can be able to do that. So, here ultimately you will end up with uh, integral from 0 to pi by 2, 2 sin theta times uh, cos theta d theta divided by square root of sin theta is uh, sin square theta is sin theta and square root of 1 minus sin square theta is cos square theta. So, ultimately cos theta. So, this will be 2 times integral from 0 to pi by 2 d theta. So, ultimately we will obtain 0 times pi by 2. So, this is pi that means we have gamma half square gamma half square equals to pi and from here it implies that gamma half is nothing but square root of pi and this is what we needed to prove. So, the value of gamma half is square root of pi. So, this is also a very important relation in uh, gamma function and we often um, how to say uh, require the value of gamma half while calculating any type of um, any type of uh, in, uh, how to say integral or a formula. Um, next Our next formula is uh, we call it as Legendre's duplication formula. Of course, its proof is little bit uh, extensive or uh, a little bit lengthy. So, I will avoid the proof. Um, however, um, uh, I am just going to write the formula. So, the formula says that so that square root of pi times gamma 2 m equals to 2 to the power 2 m minus 1 times gamma m times gamma m plus half and uh, this is our required duplication formula where m is any positive number. Now, um, uh, this formula here, I mean in order to prove this, we start with the definition of gamma function and then we do some trigonometrical substitution. It is not very complicated, it is just a little bit lengthy. So, I leave this, uh, this proof up to the students and uh, also you can look into the book of uh, uh, Santi Narayan and uh, other authors where you can find this uh, trivial proof there. Um, what I am interested is to show the application of these uh, formulas that uh, how you can calculate different values of gamma. For example, uh, we know gamma 1 is 1, but what, what is gamma half? And uh, you see the, with the application of uh, this, uh, uh, this, this result here, we can be able to calculate the value of gamma half. So, these formulas, although their proof is a little bit uh, lengthy, uh, they are very handy in order to, um, in order to uh, obtain different values of uh, gamma half or beta uh, half, um, beta uh, uh, half and uh, 1 by 4 or 1 by 2, things like that. So, um, these formulas are quite handy and uh, we are basically interested in their application. So, let us see with the help of uh, this formula what else uh, we can uh, we can do 
So, our next uh, result is or example is show that let us say show that gamma 1 by 4 times gamma 3 by 4 is equal to square root 2 pi. So, let us see how we can prove it. So, the solution um, here we take m equals to 1 by 4. So, take 1 by 4 equals to m, m equals to 1 by 4 uh, in the duplication, duplication formula. So, if I substitute m equals to 1 by 4, what would happen? So, we will obtain square root of pi times gamma half and uh, this one will be 2 to the power uh, 1 by 4 minus 1. Uh, so, I am going to write minus half. So, just to save some time, I can write it as um, to the power minus half gamma 1 by 4 times gamma this one is 1 by 4 plus half. So, basically 3 by 4. So, this will result into uh, gamma 1 by 4 times gamma 3 by 4 equals to 2 times I have uh, square root of pi and then I have gamma half. So, gamma half is again square root of so square root of pi and this one is square root of 2. So, this is square root of 2 times uh, square root of pi times square root of pi is equals to square root of 2 times pi. So, you see although we needed to prove gamma 1 by 4 times gamma 3 by 4, uh, we never we did not use at all the integral definition of gamma, we just used this formula. So, in order to getting into the integral and then trying to prove something uh, which could have been a little bit uh, um, uh, how to say complicated or extensive in a way, uh, we just used this formula and with the help of which the whole proof was like 3 lines long. So, as you can see these formulas are proving to be very handy in order to solve um, any type of uh, gamma formula here. Um, so, next example could be uh, our next example is uh, uh, example. So, show that integral from 0 to infinity e to the power minus x square dx equals to square root of pi by 2. Solution. So, here uh, when we see on the right hand side, if it is square root of pi, that means uh, it must result into gamma half in some way. So, the instinct, the basic instinct would say that it has to be gamma half and that means here it would somehow lead to gamma half times some factor that means half. So, it, it has to be in some way gamma half and let us see whether we can obtain gamma half or not. So, let us say we have i equals to our in given integral or the left hand side. So, this is our left hand side. I can also write left hand side or i that that is not a problem here. Now, let us substitute x square equals to z. So, then in that case this will be um, 2 x dx equals to d z and uh, when x is 0, z is 0, when x is infinity, z is infinity. So, from here we will have um, i equals to integral from 0 to infinity, uh, this will be half uh, e to the power minus z dx will turn into d z and now it is divided by 1 by x and x is 1 by so x is square root of z so this will be square root of 1 by square root of z so i can write this as half integral from 0 to infinity z to the power half minus 1 times e to the power minus z dz isn't it because half minus 1 is minus half and uh, then that 
z to the power minus half will come into denominator and then it will turn into a positive power. So, I can be able to write this thing in this way. Now, this is the definition of gamma half. If I take m, equal, uh, m equals to uh, half, then this is nothing but gamma half actually from the definition of gamma function. So, this is our gamma half, isn't it? And uh, we know that gamma half is square root of pi by 2 and this is what we needed to prove here. So, you see uh, using just some simple formulas, we are not getting into any complicated calculation, we can be able to prove that uh, uh, this integral is actually square root of pi by 2. So, this is uh, one another uh, application of um, uh, gamma integral. There is, uh, uh, there is one more example that we can, uh, that we can uh, prove. So, So, it says uh, express integral from 0 to 1 x to the power m times 1 minus x to the power n whole to the power p dx in terms of beta function, in terms of beta function and uh, hence evaluate integral from 0 to 1 x to the power 5 times 1 minus x to the power 3 whole to the power 3 dx. So, solution. So, first of all our given integral let me write it as i equals to 0 to 1 x to the power m 1 minus x to the power n whole to the power p dx. So, if I substitute, so first of all in order to have this in terms of uh, beta function this has to be x to the power m minus something and this has to be 1 minus x to the power p minus something or n minus something. So, we have to get rid of this x to the power n if we want to express it as a beta function. So, I substitute x to the power n equals to z then this will be n times dx uh, x to the power n minus 1 equals to dz and when x is 0 z is 0 when x is 1 z is 1. So, this will remain uh, as it is. Uh, so, the limits will remain unchanged this will be 1 by n. Uh, z to the power m by n 1 minus z to the power uh, p and uh, this will be z to the power um, 1 minus n by n dz because we have to find out the value of uh, x to the power. So, this x to the power n minus 1 will come in the, the denominator and uh, then in that case uh, x would be z to the power 1 by n. So, it will be n minus 1 by n and then the whole thing will go in the numerator and then it will turn into something like this. Now, this can be written as 1 by n integral from 0 to 1. I will put this and this together. So, this will be um, m plus 1 m plus 1 by n minus 1 and this will be 1 minus z to the power p d z is not it. Now, this is this is uh, our x to the power m minus 1 in the beta function formula and this is 1 minus x to the power n. So, I can write this whole thing as 1 by n beta of or capital B of m plus 1 by n comma p plus 1 because in beta function this was supposed to be p minus 1, but since it is p that means I can be able to write it as p plus 1 minus 1 and hence you have here p plus 1. All right. So, that means I, I was able to or we were able to explain express this integral here, this integral here in terms of a beta function. All right. So, let me write it as integral from 0 to 1 x to the power m 1 minus x to the power n whole to the power p dx equals to this. Now, we are supposed to calculate the value of this. So, in order to calculate the value of uh, the given integral take m equals to 5 and n equals to 
3 and p equals to 3. So, then we have integral from 0 to 1 x to the power 5 1 minus x to the power 3 whole to the power 3 d x equals to. So, our n is 3 and uh, beta m is 5 plus 1 by 3 and uh, p is 3. So, this is this. So, I can be able to write 1 by 3 beta uh, 2 comma 4. Now, I will use the beta and gamma relation here. So, then this will reduce to gamma 2 times gamma 4. So, I believe this was relation 1 and then we have gamma 2 plus 4. So, this will reduce to 1 by 3 times gamma uh, 2 times gamma 4 divided by gamma 6. And now, I can be able to write this whole thing uses, using that gamma factorial relation. So, that means gamma 2 is 2 times gamma 1 and uh, gamma 4 is 4 uh, factorial 4. So, let, let us write in terms of factorial. So, factorial 2 times gamma 1 factorial times uh, factorial 4 times gamma 1 uh, divided by factorial uh, so, so n minus 1. So, factorial 3 times gamma 1 and then I have uh, fa here gamma 6. So, it will be factorial 5. So, it will be factorial 5 times gamma 1. So, all the gamma 1s will get uh, um, how to say will be 1. So, this will be 1 by 2, 2 times 3 times 2 times 1 and then this will be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So, this will get cancelled, 2 to cancel. So, the answer will be um, and then we also have here I believe 1 by 3 sorry. So, we also have 1 by 3 here. So, um, we will have 1 factorial times uh, gamma 1 and this one will be 1 again. So, 3 and then this ok. So, 1 by 60. So, this is the value of that uh, integral. So, integral from 0 to 1 x to the power 5 1 minus x to the power 3 whole to the power 3, 3 d x equals to 1 by 60 and this is what we needed to show. So, here we saw that uh, if we are asked to evaluate a certain integral of this type, we just have to use this formula here, the one which we have derived, put the values of m and n and p to obtain the given problem and then we just have to calculate these uh, gamma functions which does not even involve calculating an integral, we just have to remember some formulas. So, like gamma n is uh, n minus 1 factorial, so gamma 2 is uh, 1 factorial, gamma 4 is 3 factorial and gamma 6 is 5 5 factorial and with the help of which we can be able to calculate these uh, gamma functions uh, this uh, integral here. So, uh, similarly there can be uh, some other problems as well and uh, I believe uh, you can be able to solve them. Uh, I will also include uh, those problems uh, in our in our uh, assignment sheet so that uh, you can be able to practice uh, more um, and uh, uh, probably I will uh, solve one more example from gamma function in our next lecture and then we will close this topic and start with uh, differentiation under the integral sign. So, um, thank you for your time and uh, I will see you in the next class.